Uh, my uh, Michael Corleone. What's good, everybody? Where you at, man? Where you at? Where you at? Eric, what to do? Who we got on here? Okay, we got Eric Lamarck. Good morning to you, Raphael. What up with it? Michael Fisher, Daryl, what up with it? All right, y'all know I need 25 to start talking, so we're going to see real quick what we got. Michael, hey, what's going on with you? Hustle mode, as you should be, man. I'll be watching you be all over the world getting it in. Uh, you need to turn me on or something like that. That might be something I could do in my spare time, E. I'm not trying to get in on your hustle, but if there's a little room, I'll let your partner. Tracy, what up, sis? Okay. All right, where I'm at, man? I guess my signal is my signal breaking up. Somebody tell me my signal breaking up because it look like people going on and off. Um, yeah, it must be breaking up. Okay. Ronnell Black, my man, Fast Black, what to do? All right, real quick, man. Lately, y'all been seeing, um, I guess, the commentary between me and Savage, me and Michael Corleone. We've been going back and forth on debating. Um, wait till the end of today. <laughs> you tight. Okay. Uh, about We've been debating about biker versus MC, and, and the whole thing has basically been about, you know, who designed the definition? Who came up with the definition of what a biker is or, you know, what a biker isn't? Uh, Charlie Parker, what up with you? Bart, what up? Good morning, sir. Again, sir. Vincent, what to do? Solo, what to do? Timothy, what to do? So, John Wayne, what to do? Is all you need a referee tonight? Is. <laughs> we might, we might. Um, you know, because, you know, me and Michael, we go hard at each other, man. Me and, me and uh, Corleone, we go hard at each other. But I don't want you guys to get it mistaken, man. We are friends. We cool. You know, we didn't had our ups and we didn't had our downs. But as gentlemen and as men, you know, we didn't came to a, an understanding. He just has his own opinion. And I'm going to tell you right now, really. You know what I'm saying? Savage, I mean, Michael Corleone. I'm sorry. And I got to stick to Michael Corleone. Michael Corleone is really a scorned individual. He's MC scorned. <laughs> That's my shot. I'm waiting on him to call me, man, so we can have some fun. But, um... That's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Tonight is going to be important for you guys to call in 404-464-8785. Um, 404-464-8785. Um, it's going to be very important that you guys call in tonight um, because the topic, the, the, the topic about being a biker, um, what a biker is, is so broad. Everybody, Pedro, what it do? Um, um, Ladaria, what up with it? Miss Dixon. Keisha, what up with it? Miss Jackson. Um, Lavish, Vincent. The, the definition about being a biker is so broad. Everybody has their own rules, regulations, terms, and conditions as far as what makes you a biker. That's not my concern. My concern is not about you being a biker. And, and, and it's not even my concern either way, okay, if you are if you are, if you're not. What I'm saying is this. What I teach on and what I preach on is the rules and regulations of, of being an MC, of us taking the history, uh, dissecting it, and bringing it forward into today's times to understand what it is to be an MC, to get the MC culture back to where it used to be. Everybody keeps talking about how good it was back then, how good it was back then. Well, I think we can get back to then. That's just what I believe. You know, a lot of people say I'm crazy for that. But I think that if we, if we start holding each other accountable, um, and we start paying homage to to what this whole foundation was based on. Um, I think that's what makes it all. Um, I think that's what makes Young Black what it do. Sure will, man. Uh, Vincent, that's all I know how to do. Latoya, what's up with it? I think that if if we if we start holding each other accountable for what they promised to be a part of, for what they promised to do, 
then that will get us back on course to what used to be, as they used to say back in the day, you know, how it was back in the day. I know a lot of things have come and gone and, you know, we can't change time. We can't go back in history. Uh, what up with it, Will? Um, wait for tonight's sale. This might be considered cheating, getting a head start. No, no, I'm waiting on Michael Corleone. But I'm, what I'm saying is I'm putting it out there because I want to, and, and then I don't ever have enough time on my show anyway. In my live, I got to do this Facebook live for the people who don't get a chance to tune into the show. But I promise you tonight, you're going to want to tune in. Um, what, what I'm saying is this, man, is that the culture of MC, the lifestyle, as Michael Corleone calls it, the hobby or whatever you want to call it. To me, I know for a fact that being in a motorcycle club is not a hobby. You know, you the definition might say, so what up, Cheeks? Carlos, what it do? DJ, what up? DG, DJ, okay. What time and how do I find it? I'm in Dallas. Um, on any device, I'm going to answer that, on any device, I don't care what kind of phone you got, Android, iPhone, cheap phone, whatever. Go to your play, go to your app store, whatever store you download the apps, and it's a free app. You're going to download 106 Live, L-I-V-E Radio, R-A-D-I-O. Just say it. Just type in 106 Live Radio. It'll be a black background. Let me show you. It'll be a black, a black background with red writing. Um, this is what it looked like right there. You see that? That's what it looked like. That's exactly how it looks. It'll be a black uh, a black background with red writing, and you just download that um, download that app, and you can get it from there. If you're on a computer, then it's the same thing, 106LiveRadio.com. But from any tablet, like I'm on my tablet talking to you now, so if we're on a tablet, it's 106LiveRadio, not the .com. It's not a V in front of it. A G is just one one zero six live radio from any tablet or phone from a computer. You at the .com. Terry, what's up with it? Um, Lawrence um, Hawkins, what up? So, thank you, uh, DJ. I appreciate you. So, also, make sure you tell all your friends. So, tonight, and we'll probably be doing this for the next couple of weeks, um, because this is a topic that, that that has sparked a lot of attention. Michael Corleone has a, a whole movement behind this thing. And, and at the end of the day, at the end of the day, simply all I want to say is, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> heavy <D> say. <laughs> Uh, anyway, all I want to say is this, is that however you bike, okay, then bike. All I'm saying is, is you cannot join an MC and challenge, change, or go against the rules that's already been set. Now, the other part of that is everybody said, well, what are, where are the rules written at? What library? Where can I find them at? But a lot of them you can't. A lot of them you can't, and a lot of them you really have to do the research. You really have to talk to the OGs and 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 talk to them and find out what why the rules were derived, and and see if they make sense to you. Because a lot of the rules make plenty of sense. Trust me, they'll save your ass on a lot of different occasions. They make plenty of sense. So there is no set form and fashion about the rules or how the rules work. Um, but there are rules, and we must follow them if we join MC. And this this the thing. If you just biking and you got your own bike, I'm on, you know, because that's, that's one of the things Michael Corleone speaks. Hey, man, I'm my own man. Can't nobody tell me. And you are right. Boom. But if you decide to join an organization, if you decide to join an MC, and they already have predestined, preset in stone rules, then you have to abide by the rules. You can't join an MC and be an independent. Think independently, be independent. You can't do that. Once you join an MC, you got to go to the we thinking, the team thinking. You got to think team, think we. Um, all right, Vincent, appreciate you. Just say when it, when in Rome, I, I, I hear you, but it's so much more to that because you're not, you, you in Rome, but within Rome, there's so many facets, so many different rooms uh, to being in Rome. Um, but anyway, a lot of people, they, they join the MC, but they want to have an independent mentality. And you can't do that. There's no independence um, in MC. There's no I in MC. I guess I can say that. There's no I in MC. You know what I'm saying? Uh, is there, I, there, isn't, there isn't even an I in motorcycle club. So I can say that. There's no I in motorcycle club. I'm trying to get Sav- uh, uh, Michael Corleone on the phone, man. There you go, right there. There you go. Y'all see my man? Say, man, what's, 
What's good, man? I got you on live, man. On live what? On live Facebook. I'm talking about I am, I invited you to the show tonight as my special guest. And tonight we're gonna we're gonna talk about um what a biker is or what a biker isn't versus, you know, being an MC. And I told her most likely this is gonna be a one or two or three part series. But tonight we will have a good time. Um so my, I, I've already told him. I, I told him while you were, while you were getting dressed, that you were scorned with the MC. I'm scorned with the MC. <laughs> hey, no, 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 no. It, when, when, you, when I say, when I say scorned, that don't mean you can't come around. What I'm saying is, you, you have your own. You, you, you fed up. Basically, scorned means you just fed up. Um, I'll be honest with you. I, I wouldn't. Uh... I wouldn't classify it as scorn or fed up with the MC, per se. What I am scorned, I guess what I would say I don't like, which I'm good with it because it doesn't really, it doesn't affect me. But I don't, I don't understand how people do things some, some, when some of, a lot of it don't make sense to me. Okay. Well, and that's one of the things I was just telling them. That's what we're going to try to... We're going to try to get get together today or tonight on the show. I told them most likely it's going to be one or two parts. But that's what we're going to try to figure out. Why? How does it make sense and, and how do we make it make sense? You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, what up with it, Dion? What up, Mike? Man, are you two going to be able to let one another talk? Yeah, we will. I promise you. At the end of the day, everybody has their own understanding of what it is, you know, as far as being a biker, as far as been in a motorcycle club, but this is what I just said, and you can rewind it. What I said was, you can't join a motorcycle club with an independent mind thinking. Once you join a motorcycle club, you have to give up the independent mind thinking and become the team thinker and the we thinker. You agree or disagree? I, I totally agree. Yeah. But like everybody, that English language. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I call the English language a language of thieves. Okay. Everything that was ever stolen was stolen with the English language. And I'm going to use one of your words. It's levels and degrees. You see? Yeah. So I think my biggest problem is everybody got this high protocol standard and whatnot, right? But the truth of the matter is, man, and I said, I, I'm going to save something for the show, but I'm stealing this from Swag, Kings of the South Swag. He made a statement yesterday. When 95% of the people on the set joined this, it was because their homeboy was in it, their homegirl was in it, it was fun, you know? So, what, what, what happened? So, so basically, and this is one of the things that, again, this is what I try to teach on. A lot of people don't take the time to think about what it is they're, they're joining when they join a motorcycle club. They, like I said, and it's really not their fault. It's the fault of the clubs, mm -hmm. uh, of the clubs that are out there because nobody is making anybody do the history, do the research, um, you know, do the, you know, just to learn what it is. Like you just said, like, like you said, the swag said, I've been saying it. A lot of people join the club because they, you know, they, they, they think it's going to always be fun. But it's not always fun. But it, and it's and it's just like a household. If you ever grew up in a household with two or three brothers and two or three sisters, it ain't never been always fun in a house. You know what I'm saying? With with blood family, let alone with family that you don't even know, but you have to consider them family. That's because you got to think. So when you when you was a kid, and I don't know what you used to go swimming a lot. Yeah, we did. And it's time to get in a pool or jump in the ocean and go swimming. You're not, all you're considering is the fun aspect. You got you to gotta understand, life is complicated enough. As it is. Life, okay. is hectic. life is hectic. You know what I'm saying? And, and like, so man, the motorcycle is supposed to be a release. It's supposed to be something that's done without thought where you jump on it and you just go. Like how we used to do back in the day, ride all day, up and down, everywhere. You see what I'm saying? So when you start putting a lot of thought or are forced to put a lot of thought into something that's supposed to be a leisurely activity, that's not a natural function. You see what I'm saying? So for somebody joining a motorcycle club, it's hell yeah. I'm getting with all these, I, I, I watch my language too. 
If, heck yeah, I'm, I'm getting with all these brothers. We all share the same interests. We gonna ride here. Nobody's really thinking about, at first you learn that, you learn later that it comes with it, but nobody's really thinking about the political aspect, the headaches, the, 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 nobody's thinking about all that. They just thinking about hanging, drinking, riding, eating. Okay, and I, but, but, and, and, and I agree, but that don't, but what I'm saying, I agree, but that don't, um, but that don't mean that you, that, that the rules and the regulations don't have to apply. What, and, and I'm going to say it just like this, to give you another example. You don't have to be a Boy Scout to go camping. You can go camping with you and your homeboys by yourself. But when you join the Boy Scouts, there's rules to camping. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And you have to abide by those rules. You got to follow those rules. When, when you go camping with the Boy Scouts, it's so, oh, you got to do it like this, do it like that. Hell, but when we go camping with the homies, we, we do how we want to do. All I'm saying is that a lot of people have gotten to the point to where as they're bringing their individual mindsets into the motorcycle community, into the motorcycle clubs, and then they're upset when they find out that their mind, that their that their individual ways don't don't align with the motorcycle clubs, with the with the rules and the regulations. I, I could agree with that. I could agree with that. Yeah. I, I really can't agree because when you join a motorcycle club, nobody's twisting your arm to do it. I guess that's what the prospecting stage is for, right? Well, it's supposed but, to be. Yeah. Wait, it's supposed to be. But when a motorcycle, if, and you can't blame the motorcycle club. I wouldn't blame the motorcycle club, but shit happens. So if at any time you feel like the motorcycle club is impeding on your individuality as a person, I don't think it was designed to do that. And I think we've become less appreciative with time or we're trying to put everybody in the same mold. We're trying to make... It's like everybody wants this cookie cutter. Yeah, you got different personalities in a, in a in a club, but what clubs have to understand, they don't have to understand nothing. But what it would, I think, it would behoove clubs to understand or overstand is that you got different personalities, different backgrounds. Yes, you got your core base rules. You understand? Everything needs it. It's gotta have it. Some are more stringent or require more than others. Rules wouldn't be so hard to follow if they were the same across the board and there weren't different rules for different people. If there was more consistency, sometimes a lot of the things in a club that you might, you might not necessarily agree with wouldn't be so hard to swallow. But at the end of the day, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not anti-club. I don't think it's for me. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I don't think it's for me personally. And I probably had to find that out the hard way because of my mentality. I'm not just going to swallow and do anything that somebody say just because they got a position of authority or they think that I should. If it don't make sense to me, I have a hard time doing it. If there's no logic behind it, I have a hard time doing it. If I don't want to do it, I got a hard time doing it. So it's not a knock against the club. It's more so I think it's a personal thing. You know, I can't, you can't no, tame the lion. lion. The lion is a lion or a lion. It's hard to tame lions. You know what I'm saying? And I'm one of those where I like to have fun. I support you. I do everything. I'm, I'm going to be your best brother. You need me, everybody knows. Savage going to be there. When it counts, I'm going to be there. But there's certain rules that if I think it's a little bit too much and it's conflicting with my personal spirit, I can't do it. And, 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 and again, like I said, I, everything, we're both saying the same thing. All I'm saying is this, is that all that's fine and dandy. When, you, when you're talking about your rules, what you will and will not allow, what you will and will not stand for. But the, the part that it gets complicated on, Savage, is that you volunteered to join the MC. The MC didn't join you. You joined the MC. So however... Maybe and, and, and I and maybe that is. And the false pretenses come from the MC or the MC maybe or the time that you spend prospecting for the MC maybe did not you didn't you know, they only showed you the good stuff. You only had a chance to rock. No, no, I wouldn't I wouldn't even say that. Well let me let me let me let me finish. You only had a chance. Okay. 
but you only had a chance to ride and hang out and function. You never because prospects are not involved in the inner workings of the club. They're not involved in meetings, and you know they don't get to they don't get to stand in the meetings. They have to stand outside. Um, you, you feel what I'm saying when it comes to certain things that are being discussed. So all they know is the good times, and the brothers are not really sharing with them. But once you get that patch on your back, now what they call the inner door or the upper room or whatever you want to call it has been privy to you and it's open. And now this is where you start seeing all the other stuff. And you're like, wow, you feel what I'm saying? Like you said, you're like, wait a minute, I can't just ride no more. I got to Now I got to, you know, do this and do that. And, you know, and all these other commitments, you know, all I'm saying is this, is that I put the responsibility on the MC because there should be nothing that a person should not know or have a clue mm -hmm. of before they join the MC. You, you, a lot of clubs, like a lot of clubs, we both will agree, are just taking people in. You know, 90-day prospect, uh, six-month prospect, whatever it may be. They're taking people in left and right. And now, like you say, these people get in there and say, wait a minute, where where's all the fun? Why do I have to do this? Why do I have to do that? Um, you know, you never thought about, because you're the low man on the totem pole, you gotta clean the you gotta clean the the, the clubhouse bathroom. <laughs> you, you feel what I'm saying, or you gotta? I think, you know, it, you know what, sir, man. I think that's the least of the problem. I think the problem, and and I can't speak for everybody. You know, and 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 what I'm about to say is not necessarily something that me personally dealt with, but from what I've heard, I think when the dynamics and the core makeup of something changes, it's like a marriage. If you listen to yourself, I don't know if you ever go back and listen to yourself, but a lot of the things you, John Bunch, and a lot of the things y'all speak about with the MC, it's the same thing as a relationship. It is. Right? It is. So what's the divorce? So let me ask you a question. Do you have any idea what the divorce rate is in the United States? High. High is all outdoors. I agree. It's over 80%. I totally agree. Okay, so why are you having the same problems in an all-volunteer outfit that was designed to have fun that you have in a relationship? But see that, but that's your definition of being a volunteer outfit that it was. Uh, no, 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 no. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I understand, yeah. but but that's your definition of it of being in a voluntary outfit that's designed to have fun. The original MC, the original MC was was built on. Um, us, the brothers having an outlet separate from our home lives, separate from our family lives. It was something that we, that we, that we were going to get together and be a part of totally separate. So we did things in the, in the MC that we couldn't do at home, you know, that they couldn't do at home, that they, that they couldn't do around their family, their kids and the whole nine yards. And, and I'm just talking about I, just to drink it. I'm, I'm just going to say drinking. Whatever else, it, whatever else it may have been, it may have been just the drinking or being able to curse or being able just to just to not have to, you know, to to be so so correct around around the house. Can, can I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Ninety nine percent of us aren't one percent as outlaws or in an OMC, correct? Uh, yes. The ninety nine percent. Majority of people. The majority of people listening or watching this show right now aren't in an OMC, correct? Aren't in an OMC? Are not yes. in an OMC. You're correct. So, listening to you talk sometimes, I don't understand why something we do when we have time should be so taxing. We shouldn't even be having this conversation. It should not be so taxing. Well, but but when that's what I'm evolve? saying. Let me, let me finish. Okay, go ahead. When go ahead. did it when did it evolve and turn into something this damn complicated to where show, this show with me and you tonight gonna have the biggest ratings you ever had? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna have the biggest ratings you ever had. But when did it become? Why is this a topic? Why are so many people, you, you remember the show, um, Love and Hip Hop? Yep. Not Love and, yeah, the original show, Love and Hip Hop, with, um, Samal, Sanaa Lathan and the other dude, I forget his I name. I got you, you remember the, yeah, talking about the, yeah. It's like, so many people are falling out of love 
with the set. Or so many people are, it's not, it's not a carefree, let's jump to it like it used to be for so many people. Why? But now understand this though. Where did though. we go wait, Where did we go wrong? We went wrong. We went, we went wrong, yeah, Savage. We went wrong. we went wrong when we made it a public entity. That's what we went wrong. The set didn't used to be a public. The set used to be a private entity. We went wrong when we just started allowing any and everybody to be a part of the set. You feel what I'm saying? Well, that's what happens when money gets involved uh, in anything. Whatever it was that opened it up, trial. Trust me. Whatever it was that uh, that opened it up. Um, that made it well, what it is today. Your, you can't sell. You got yourself to blame for that. No, I don't. Yes, the hell you do. No, I don't. You can't. You can't put that on me. Yes, I can. No, <laughs> it went public. It went public. It went public eleven years ago. I mean, in two thousand eleven, when all Atlanta shenanigans went to the video screen. <laughs> yeah, but that, but that, but. but but that the videos, I know, I know, I, I got you, I got you. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying is this: is that when I first came to Georgia, okay, and I, and I can give, I can give my 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 analogy. When I first asked everybody, "Hey, man, where does everybody hang out?" It was it was called the Frozen Palace, okay. The first time I went to the Frozen Palace, I was treated so bad. And nobody talked to me. Nobody said nothing to me. It was like I was an outcast because I wasn't part of the inner circle. You understand what I'm saying? It took I, me. I, I know people. I know people that feel that way to this day when uh, they come around. There. I don't want to go around y'all. I don't ride in y'all. Y'all don't even talk to me. But and, that and, that, and and that's how it should be. Just because it's just like this. It's just like this. It's just like this. If you go around Masons and they're having a conversation, you won't be privy to that conversation. If I come around, if I come around you and your Jamaican partners and y'all talking about whatever it is y'all talking about, because I'm not in the circle. They're not even going to acknowledge you. Thank you very much. Because it's a private sector. It's a private entity. And that's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is this, is that the problem with the set now is that it has become so public and so glamorized and, and, and so watered down because everybody wants a piece of the camera. Everybody wants a piece of the eyeball of the, everybody wants that. Everybody wants their club. What happened to being, what happened to back in the day when your club was your club and nobody even, you know, when people saw motorcycle members, they went the other way. You feel what I'm saying? I'm not saying that, that that's the right thing to be on. I'm not saying it. But I'm telling you, the biggest part of finding brotherhood now, you feel what I'm saying, is the fact that nobody really, really, nobody really and truly desires brotherhood. They just desire, they just desire the fame of the MC. They desire, you know, in order to be, uh, they desire being liked by the MC. Yeah. Yeah. But you I, do have some variables that change. You, yeah. Like whenever there's a problem, you got to look at the variables as well. You can't just take that problem and say there's there's a lot of things that change, you know? Yeah. I can't speak I can't speak for the West Coast. I know they got their own set of issues over there, some of which I'm familiar with, some of which I, I, I I'm not. But the demographic is totally different. Yeah, it's street. Um, it's all street though. It's it's over there, it's street. Exactly. Yeah, it's street. So Certain shit that's not gonna fly. It's not gonna fly. Period. Atlanta, which is what I can speak for, is probably I would say seventy. If you tell me if this is a fair and that seventy percent transient, probably more. I say more. Ain't from here. Yeah, I say more okay. than that. I, I say more than that because you got to look at it like this. Not only are they not from here, not only are they not from here. And I'm, and this might, this might kind of ruin me when I say this. This might kind of ruin me. But eighty percent of the people that are here now, that are that are the generation, I would say behind me, they grew up on a different. They grew up with. They grew up with. A, uh, they grew up with their hand being held, as opposed to when we grew up. But, but, but say, hold on, you, you, let me, you didn't let me make my point. Okay. But first of all, I don't think the problem we're dealing with is the other generation. We're dealing with 40-plus-year-old people, men and women. Okay. We don't deal with the other generation. We're dealing with 40-plus-year-old people. I can say, you talk about brotherhood, it's hard to have 
if, if, if you want to get down to the core of it, it don't make sense. Okay. Because it, this, this is why I say it doesn't make sense. The only thing that you share is that steel horse. Period. Brotherhoods, like everybody that's done it knows, brotherhoods are forged on the road. What brought the motorcycle clubs from the research that I've done, what brought the common thread that brought motorcycle clubs together back in the 70s and the 60s and some of the 80s was pain. You understand? That was the common thread. Pain. Loss, loss, uh, pain, pain loss. loss. Yeah, I got you. Exactly. Now the, dem the, the, the directive has changed a lot. You see what I'm saying? And I'm not saying because it's changed that we have to agree with it, but now there's a new objective. The common thread that brought, brought everybody together is that y'all can all afford a $25 plus thousand dollar motorcycle. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? When back in, the, back in the 90s and early 2000s, when I was riding sport bikes, we used to, I mean, some of us could afford multiple bikes, but a lot of people, man, they had to work on that bike. You know what I'm saying? But they rode together. You, you, you get what I'm saying? But the, the, the thing has changed a lot because you got you got a lot of people, you got big egos on expensive motorcycles with a lot of expensive parts. Everybody got their money and you can't, ain't nobody dealing with no sucker shit. So what do you think is going to happen when you take that, 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 that series of of circumstances and put it together in a closed room. Well, and that's the same thing that I preach on Savage. One of the things I always tell everybody, it takes it takes a real boss to get bosses to come together to to listen to a boss. You understand what I'm saying? When everybody considers yourself a boss, like you just said, <clears throat> I make my own money, you know, I, I've been doing this thing on my own and, you know, nobody told me how to get here and now you want me to listen to you because see, a lot of it too now we get, this is another aspect of the show that me and you are safe for later. But a lot of it you can get into is this, is that it ain't so much that people won't, don't respect Big Seller Savage, but people say, well, why should I when I think I got more money than him? A lot of people, a lot of people think that, um, a lot of people think that their money dictates their place in the MC. Yeah, that, that is true. And, and I'm going to tell you something that you touched on that. Um, to me, I'm I'm a boss. Okay. I haven't worked for nobody since I was I, I haven't I haven't punched a clock or worked for somebody since I was 19 years old. Okay. 20 years old. You see what I'm saying? And when I did back then, it didn't last long. But one thing about me, it doesn't have anything to do with money as far as me. For me, it's respect. I got you. You understand? So I'm not looking at somebody based on the money aspect. I'm going to respect how you live. I'm going to respect what you do when it's hard. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to respect how you carry. In Jamaica, with Butcher Banton, the guy that's going through, he's in prison right now. You know what I'm saying? It says, blood is my head, but I never bowed. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Bloody is my head that I never bowed. Bloody has been my head, but I never bowed. So there's certain elements of a leader that I'm going to respect more so than other people. You know what I'm saying? Let's take Fred Fenston out in L.A. Okay. You know, from what I've seen, Fred ain't no millionaire, but Fred commands a certain type of respect without saying, hey, respect me. I want y'all to respect me. He commands a certain type of respect, and people might get it mis mis misconstrued when I say command. He commands it without commanding it. No, no, I mean, but but if you're not from the era, yeah, if you don't, if you're not from the, if you're not from the era, then you don't understand. What I'm saying is where we come from. When you say the West Coast, when you come from the West Coast, and we're gonna say the rest for the show, y'all. Everybody keep telling me to say the rest for the show. When we when we, when we come from the West Coast, man, you have to earn your place. Where you come from, Savage, you have to earn your place. You have to earn your name. You can't just go around where you come from calling yourself Savage. <laughs> you, you feel? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what I'm saying. So that that that's the whole thing in a nutshell. But brother, I just wanted to call you and let everybody know that this is the topic tonight. This is what we'll be on, um, and 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 that I want everybody, man, to be a part of tonight's show. Four zero four four six four eight seven eight five is the call in number to, for tonight's show, my man Savage. 
has agreed to do. We're going to do this if it takes us two shows, three shows. We're going to get some type of understanding on this, man, where people can can better make a judgment and better have um, just better have a way. I know better, you know, have a better, you know, have a have a brighter flashlight into this darkness. How about that? <laughs> and, and I also want people to know, like, me and Cell usually never agree. And we still don't agree on a lot of things, most things. We don't agree. We don't share the same opinion. So the show is not going to be, I can speak for myself. I can't speak for Big Cell. <laughs> I'm not going to agree with everything he says. And if I don't agree with it, I'm going to let him know that I don't agree with it. I'm sure he's going to do the same thing. But at the end of the day... We on a common ground now where we should be able to keep it respectful. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna throw no furniture. I promise, I won't throw no furniture. I ain't gonna kick the table over. Hey, we, hey, we, I, I, I got, I got a security. Don't worry, I got, a, I got a security button at the station anyway. All I gotta do is hit the button. They'll come in and take care. Right. <laughs> tonight, 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 so we gonna send them ratings over the top. Well, no, I mean, and and it's and and, and not even so much for the ratings, man. I just want to thank you, like I said. For for because a lot of people always try to make it an issue, make it a battle. You know what I'm saying? Ocell and, and Savage, and like I said, we've had our ups and we've had our downs. But when we last speak, uh, spoke, it came to a an, an understanding. One thing I'm gonna tell you is this: tonight you keep it 100. You disagree when it's time to disagree. You agree if you can't agree. But at the end of the day, the whole point of FHO Radio is to kick the dialogue. You feel what I'm saying? I might not have the answer. My answer might not be right. But we kicking the dialogue. That's it. That's oh, all. That's what's up. Hey, one more thing. Go ahead. Man, I had, I, had a, I had to really check myself this past week. Because as many of y'all know, I really had some ill feelings towards John Bunch. Okay. Based on a lot of things that he said. Is that his name, John Bunch? Uh-huh. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. But after reading some of his comments, and he wasn't really trying to school nobody. I gotta let John Bunch know when I see him that man, he said some things that I, that really shook me up. But I'm willing to kind of put it to the side and accept him now as I see him. So what I see from now on is what I'll accept. You know, I I really wanted to call him, but I didn't have his number. You know, but it really took a lot for me. But after reading some of the things that he said, it's like I can't not agree with him because I got issues with him about something else that he said. So I want to let him know I'm, I'm burying that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to speak on that again. I think he apologized. I don't know. I didn't hear, but John Bunch, you said some stuff today, man. I mean, in, on, on, a, on some comments that really left a tone with me. So I'm, I'm burying that hatchet that I had towards how I felt towards you. Not that you give a shit, which you really shouldn't. I mean, a damn, but I'm just letting you know. Well, big ups to you on that. And one thing I tell everybody, man, John Bunch is an arrogant, a arrogant piece of uh, piece of work, man. He really is. But his his passion and his love for what he knows, because if, if you knew his story, you know he didn't have any brothers and sisters. All he had was the MC. So that's why his passion is in a different direction, and his angle is in a different direction. Um, like I said, very arrogant, but very knowledgeable and a good dude. So. Uh, I know he will appreciate that. I appreciate you for even acknowledging that. And we're going to have a good time tonight, man. See you tonight. Love you, homie. Call me if you need me. Be easy. All right, man. That's my man, Savage. Real quick. That's a, Like I said, that's a preview for tonight's show. Also, I got a young man coming on tonight um, out of uh, California, out of L.A., man. He's an artist, up and coming artist. I normally don't do the artist thing. Um... I normally don't do the artist thing, but this guy, man, in this song um, is an awesome song. So we will talk to um, Mike Grissett tonight, um, and he we will play his song live on the radio tonight. His song is is a, is a real cool song, um, and, I, and I really did like it. Let me see something real quick. But anyway, thank you all. So tonight, make sure you tune in um, and make sure that you get a chance to... Uh, call in catch the debate like i said this probably will be a two or three weeks so mike what up with it what up with you man you know you black as hell you know you're going to turn some light on man yeah man all right man i got you live on facebook on my live live on my facebook thread man i'm telling everybody tonight 
We will be talking to you, and we will be uh, playing your song tonight on the radio. What's up? How y'all doing? Yeah, man. So just give them a little bit brief history of who you are and and where you come from. My name is uh, Mike Grissett. I'm coming out of uh, Compton, California. Uh, I grew up in Long Beach. Rough. Grew up rough in Long Beach, you know what I'm saying? Play football. Well, okay. I was good in football, you know. I was good in football. I played running back. I was doing my thing, man. I had a lot of uh, letters from all types of colleges, but ended up having kids early. So, had that stopped, so I had to start working, man. I had a long process. I got eight kids now. You Whoa. Know? Yeah, it's a lot. Uh, yeah, uh, I know, I know, I know. Don't judge me. Don't, don't judge me. Don't judge me. But uh, I, I was there for all of them. You know what I'm saying? I, I named every every last one of them. I seen every last one of them born. You know what I'm saying? I'm proud of it. Okay, so well, um, real quick, give um, give them the song title. Like I said, tonight nine thirty, we're gonna talk with you a little bit more, and we're gonna play the song. What is what, what's the name of the song? The song is called Picture Perfect. And and what is you know, and what the inspired the song? It's, it was just a, uh, out of my imagination. You know what I mean? It wasn't for nobody specific or nothing like that. I just feel like everybody picture perfect in their own way. You know what I'm saying? So this this song is for everybody, not just the 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 the, the beautiful women artists. It's it's for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Everybody should feel beautiful. Okay. Well, there it is there tonight, man. Tonight, youngster, we gonna I got you calling in. We're going to talk more on the radio station. I appreciate you for uh, uh, answering the phone, getting on this camera, man. Um, again, I uh, uh, can't wait to play the song tonight, man. And, uh, again, I just hope you enjoy yourself. Hope you have a good time. Um, and I hope you appreciate the radio show. Like I said, I don't really do this that often. Um, but uh, my man, Roland Hodge, uh, Gorilla Blue out of Vegas, my, my actual, my family, we, um, you know, he, he just brought it to me. I listened to the song. I love the song. And I'm just happy for you. I'm proud of you. We're going to put it in prayer that you be become successful and uh, and that you uh, right, all, always remember FHO Radio, baby. Uh, most definitely, man. <laughs> most definitely. All right, well, we'll see you tonight again. We'll hit you up tonight. All right. All right, you do your thing, man. I'm proud of you. All right, thanks. No problem. Anyway, so that's tonight, man. Uh, what I got on Darwin. Yeah, man, I'm gonna try to make it, man. I'm trying my best to make it to Arizona right now. It's not looking too good. Uh, what up to my man, uh, sons of Apollon, Apollon OMC, my man Darwin, one of the, one of the coolest cats in the world. Um, yeah, the joint is fire. Trust me. If you, I play, I put the song on my page. If you guys want to go back and listen to it. Um, but his name is Mike Reset. And the song is um, it's an awesome song. So check him out, little young brother out of uh, out of California, eight kids. So we definitely need to see him make it. You feel what I'm saying? Because I ain't gonna be paying for him with my taxes. <laughs> Fredo, what up, man? Send me the not that number cell. The number for the radio station tonight is four zero four four six four eight seven eight five four zero four four six four eight seven eight five. Make sure you download the app. Tell all the friends. The app on any phone, any tablet, any kind of device is 106 Live Radio. If you're on a computer, you add .com. It's 106LiveRadio.com. But on any device, I don't care what kind of phone you got, what kind of tablet you got, it's a free app. You don't have to pay for it. Sell so don't get a dollar when you download it. I, you know, I get the hits. But uh, it's 106LiveRadio.com, and that will be tonight's topic. Sarita, what it do? Xavier, my man Black Moses, what up with it, man? I had a beautiful time with you this week, man, in uh, in uh, Huntsville. Kurt, what it do, man? So, shout out to all my Huntsville people, my man Robert Ramsey, um, East Boogie, Val, everybody, man, the whole entire Huntsville Rail Reed family. Again, man, my birthday was beautiful. Hey, this weekend, man, I want to say this too real quick to my man Juice, Chicago Next Level, man. Congratulations, a real big weekend for you. Um, it's going to be what it's going to be, man. I'm still trying to get there. Don't know yet, but nothing is ever final with me. So I love y'all, man. Don't forget, tune in tonight 
106 Live Radio, 106LiveRadio.com to the FHO Radio Show, 9.30 p.m. Eastern. So that means if you're in California, that's 6.30 to 8. If you're in Dallas or Houston, you guys are an hour behind me. So that'll be uh, 8.30 to 10. All right. Don't forget, be there. Be there on time. Make sure you make it. I love you. Truly, I do. And we're going to figure this MC thing out. We're going to figure this biker thing out, this brotherhood thing. We going to figure it out. All right. It's your boy Big Cell F-H-O-H-N-I-C, man. See y'all later tonight. Peace.